Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andriy Shevchenko, and on behalf of the team of the Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum, I want to thank all the journalists who tell the world about our fight for freedom. This time we're having a special event. We will be talking about the digital deregulation in environmental protection and is the project that united the Ministry of Environmental Protection, State Regulatory Service of Ukraine and USAID. I want to invite Mr. Yevgen Fedorenko, Deputy Minister of Environmental Protection and Natural Resources. Mr. Deputy Minister, the microphone is yours. <clears throat> Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank thank the teams of the state uh, regulation service and the program USAID, the competitive economy of Ukraine and the Office of Effective Deregulation as the result of our joint uh, work of our cooperation in environmental protection. We identified the licenses and permits that are not sufficient today, which actually non-effective they are in legislation, but they don't fulfill their function and they don't work. In fact, out of 127 licenses or permits uh, that should be effective in the area of environmental protection, 38 are ineffective and they require to be cancelled. They need to be cancelled. We clearly understand that the announced deregulation guillotine that was mentioned by the Prime Minister of Ukraine and the first Vice Prime Minister should not only be on paper, but should work really. But so we don't tell talk about cancellation of what's necessary for the state, but we're talking about the novels that were implemented with, with, and they were novels 10 years ago, but under current circumstances, they don't, they're not effective and they're, they're not needed in the modern digital state. This is why we're going ahead and what we're doing, we're trying to do in a most simple way for Ukrainian business. Uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection, since its establishment, pays a lot of attention to the uh, digitalization in environmental environmental area. We understand that in modern digital state that our government started building before the war and which is emphasized by the president, the priorities are transparency, availability, comfort, and the digitalization is right about that, about getting rid of chaos, about the civilized attitude and the removal of obstacles. First attempts of deregulation in environmental protection were initiated back in 2014. However, we have to state that they were incomplete, they were non-efficient. Well, well, how it looked? one license or permit was cancelled and nothing was implemented. Instead of it, the sphere was not regulated or there were just some amendments made, so the business didn't feel any simplification, any facilitation of the business itself. But since that time, many things changed and the priority became the state in the smartphone and step by step we started building this algorithm in our environmental protection sphere. Every year the local administrations re receive about 75 applications from the businesses for, for the services in, in the sphere of environmental protection. Uh, I mean uh, different guides, licenses, the explanation, letters, plans and reports. The, the obtainment of one license or permit costs more than 4,300 hours of waiting and 6,000 hryvnia of indirect costs to cancel the burdening licensing procedures, the Ministry of Environmental Protection created ecosystem, the joint national internet platform in sphere in, of environmental protection. And we started filling it with uh, environmental information. We started di digitalizing the registers and ad administering 
and administrative services. We have to state that the war changed the lives of all the Ukrainians. However, everybody understands that businesses and our economy require not fast solutions, but preservation of resources. So out of the 29 services in sphere of environmental protection, nine are digitalized in ecosystem. Five of them are provided in the format people less without intrusion of uh, government employees. Such services were already used by more than 10,000 uh, businesses this year. They spent five minutes in average instead of two months as they did before. And the amount of money saved w amounts to more than 92 million hryvnias that were spent on consulting necessary for licensing and permits. Since the establishment of ecosystem, about 25,000 businesses uh, resorted to its use. They submitted more than 65,500 applications within the last year for online services. I want to say a couple of words about these services. What are these services? Is the opinion for transborder waste transportation. It's one of the most mass use services in the sphere of environmental protection. Ukraine issues this document for transportation of the waste, which is safe for people and environment. I want to emphasize that they're safe. So those, uh, they used products, secondhand things, uh, used tires, waste paper, and other things that are in fact raw materials. The Ministry of Environmental Protection receives 5,000 applications per year for to obtain such an opinion. Currently, this opinion can be obtained through ecosystem within two or three days instead of 30 as it was before. In this way, a, a business can save at least 700 hours. Another kind of permit I want to tell you about is the declaration of waste in people less regime. Uh, such declaration is annually submitted by 15,000 businesses. Before such service w was taken 10 to 15 days, now it can take up to 30 minutes with the help of ecosystem. State registration in regime people less. This service is provided immediately. You can get registered by the state from your smartphone. The details are added to the government register and the electronic document with QR code is always available in the ecosystem. Those are just a couple examples. As I mentioned before, we have 29 services that are about to be improved and digitalized gradually about our plans they are quite ambitious and the next year ecosystem will include the electronic cabinet of the entrepreneur it will contain all the environmental information for business in e-cabinet the business will be able to work better and faster and to receive the online services what will business be able to receive through the electronic cabinet Without bureaucratic obstacles, they will be able to delegate the uh, authorities for services to submit the electronic reports. The uh, cabinet will be connected with the main modules of ecosystem. Uh, first module is e-waste, which will help track all the life cycle based on the, on the blockchain technology. The next module will be e-water module. The businesses will be able to register permits for the use, special use of water, the ability to cal calculate the water spending, and the next block is e-pesticides. The, the st state registration of permits for pesticides and non-registered pesticides permits 
to be uh, imported in the country. As to the strategic ecological evaluation, the businesses will be able to undergo the process based on one platform, was just submitting an application for strategic ecological evaluation to establish civil hearings and to, to get reports and advice to report about the approval of the government planning document. The next module is e-climate, which will allow the businesses to make a straight registration of the installation online for monitoring, reporting, and registration of the CO2 emission to approve the plan of monitoring of the business so to undergo the, the procedures contemplated by the legislation online using less, less efforts and resources, which is very important for our businesses today. Be besides, the e-cabinet will be connected to such important uh, module as OVD. I want to stop at this procedure because it's a very important instrument, first of all, for engagement of the society in approval of the resolutions on this stage of business planning. Currently, Ministry of Environmental Protection is reforming this area because within the last year we identified certain aspects, aspects that need to be improved. We are convinced that this process should be digitalized op with optimized terms. As of today, the procedure for undergoing this OVD takes 216 days. And for business under current conditions, current circumstances during the reconstruction of our country, it's a very long period, it's a very long way, but we want this reform to result in, in this process to, to take from 50 to 57 days. On this slide, you can see the timeline of the legislative changes that the ministry developed and they will be offered to, as amendments to the legislation on the influence on the environment. Besides, we will renew the functionality of the register, which will provide comfortable and efficient participation of the civil society in the business activities, the initiation of the procedure, and the opportunity to sign up the, for the cases and to track the changes. The ministry aspires to, to have the, the people not to run around for getting the papers, not to spend money, not to spend their more time than needed, but to optimize the cooperation between government, civil society, and businesses to make it comfortable and transparent. The ministry work, ministry's work is aimed at digitalization of the field, and next year we will do more work that the business will appreciate along with Ukrainians. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Evgeny. I want to invite Alexei Kucher, who is the head of the State Regulatory Service of Ukraine. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. First of all, I want to thank uh, the, the previous speaker. I want to th thank the Ministry of Environmental Protection. You know, it's the case when the regulator uh, is doing deregulation. Unfortunately, it's the exclusion in our country. And as the State Regulatory Service of Ukraine, we, as an organ which coordinates the regulation processes between the central organs and agencies of the executive government that includes local communities, the local governments. We want as we want the more regulators to look like Ministry of Environment and to be as flexible and to act in the same way as this ministry does, which is headed by Mr. Ruslan Strelets. I want to thank, which is important to me, to, to, to the 
program Competitive Economy of Ukraine, uh, founded by uh, US. AID, which enabled us to take part in these deregulation processes. We were talking about the deregulation just now because digitalization is a part of the regulation. Everybody understands it. The experts which are involved by the Competitive Economy of Ukraine program are car and who cooperate with the State Regulatory Service of Ukraine, they are experts and they work for reconstruction construction of economy and the establishment of the strategic course that we that we are already seeing after our big victory over the invaders now about the program that we're taking part in uh, mr Evgen just voiced it in part we uh, did a study of the instruments of the state deregulation. We will call it environment. We divided it into spheres. We, first of all, we want to research all the instruments. So we took, first of all, three spheres. Th first was related to environment. The second will be medicine. And third, architecture and construction. Regarding the environment, we identified 127 instruments and it was mentioned that out of those 127 instruments of the state regulation 38 were proposed to be cancelled rescinded um, uh, the rest uh, optimized in compliance with the law of, of administration services and three replaced with other instruments I want to stop in short on what those instruments are so that the average listener understands every instrument is one way or another is a burden for business. During our study with Ministry of Environment and with USAID, we identified that the environment in our country uh, is only related to 26 instruments. I want you to hear them so you understand what they are. Those the the eggs, the indicators, the declarations, permits, or approvals, quartz, cards, quotes, licenses, passports, notices, registrations, registration cards, resolutions, certificates, and special badges. And this number of instruments it burdens our businessmen, the country, the state thinking uh, strategically, taking the course set by the president, picked up by the prime minister, they want to change, first of all, the number of such instruments, so they're way, way less the number of types of these instruments to reduce their number and their uh, application in different fields. If today we, as previous speaker mentioned, if we talk today about digitalization, the essence of this process of review of the instruments of the state reaction, it should be the creation of a relevant portal. We will conditionally call it license portal or portal of the state regulation instruments where we want to reduce the number, we want to filter after all these deregulation processes, we want to concentrate them in one field and have all those digitalized processes, all, all those digitalized services, the instruments of state regulation. You probably heard that the government and the prime minister Prime Minister reported about that after the approval of the draft law, which, which state regulatory services took part in the development, is the review of those instruments. This draft law is already in Verkhovna Rada. Its number is 8058. It passed the profile committee. And as we see, there is certain discussion going on around it as to the 
soon ad adoption of this law all the regulations say and they confirm if you did if you take part in the conference everybody says that the regulation should be accomplished when there is a mechanism proposed some uh, quick mechanism for reviewing of the instruments for improvement of the life of the businesses we find obstacles somehow state regulatory service just as the ministry of environment which is on our side in this fight we take all the efforts to promote this draft law as soon as possible to have it adopted so that the committee that is contemplated there so they take they start reviewing those instruments immediately to reduce their number to improve the lives of the businesses i hope that soon it will happen and uh, as i'm telling you the essence of this big scale work which is planned um, I'll be honest with you, it's, it will be a cool resource which will facilitate the life of our businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexey. I invite Hanna Bashnyak, who is an expert of USAID, the competitive economy of Ukraine. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I want to thank Mr. Alexey and Mr. Yevgen for their addresses. They already told about our review of the instruments of state regulation. I want to focus on two moments in my address uh, to tell about the USAID program, the competitive economy of Ukraine. And in the second part, I will tell you in detail about the methods for review of the instruments of state regulation, how we do it, and I will give you some statistics as to the environment. So the competitive economy of Ukraine is aimed at improvement of com competitiveness of small and medium-sized businesses of Ukraine in international markets. It uh, helps to create transparent business climate and, to, and it helps Ukrainian companies to use the advantages of international trade. After the full-scale invasion of Russia, the program was focused on rebuilding of economy of Ukraine. Generally, starting from uh, February 2022, the program supported one 1,300 small and medium-sized businesses, and thanks to that work, we preserved more than 8,000 jobs and created more than 2,000 new jobs. In this context, it's very important for us to cooperate with the State Regulatory Service of Ukraine to create the conditions for establishment and uh, opening the business by small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. I will focus on the methods th that we used for reviewing the um, instruments of state regulation in, environment, in the sphere of environmental protection. First of all, we identified the, now the list of the instruments of state regulation. As it was said earlier, those instruments, uh, as we identified them, they are public services in the understanding of, on the law of Ukraine on public electronic services. I mean, the permits, licenses, uh, and other documents to be obtained by the business to normally do its activity in the on the level of local government and central government, etc. So it was. 127 such instruments identified. Further on, we were reviewing them by a number of criteria. First of all, we were seeing if the, the, the procedure of obta to obtain such a document is in compliance with the law of law on administrative services, which identifies the, that the, there should be a name for uh, administrative services, the uh, reasons for either refuel or issuance, and etc. By the results, we identified that in 108 instruments in the sphere of environmental protection, this procedure is not in compliance with the law on administrative services, which is 85% of the whole sphere. And this is why they require the optimization of the regulatory field to bring them in compliance with the law on administrative services. Further on, we were looking at the procedures 
of issuance of the instruments of state regulation. We were paying attention if there are procedures based on the law, how the instruments are issued. It was identified that there is no issuance procedure in 37% of cases. As the, it, as it was corroborated by the analysis, it mostly relates to the obsolete instruments that were still in the legislative field. We also paid attention to the availability of the Dublin regulation. What's the Dublin regulation? It's when the same instrument or when different instruments are aimed at the same function. And we had 15 such cases documented, mostly related to the procedure of OVD when a business has to undergo a burdening procedure of uh, evaluation of the environmental impact. And then they have to uh, obtain some permits or licenses under the very similar procedure. Also, we estimated the qu quantity and the financial indicators, the number of instruments and the number of instruments received within the last year and the pro budget proceeds on the local and central level. So this is how we identified the importance of such uh, instruments. Either they are necessary for business or not. The key point and key criteria is that we analyzed all the instruments of the state regulation for their compliance to the, with the European and world obligations uh, undertaken by Ukraine. And it was necessary to see if such instruments are acquired within the framework of uh, such obligation. Maybe such instruments could be rescinded or transferred or reformed. So this is another point we identified. During our research, we were also studying the element of digitalization of the state regulation instruments. In this case, we were looking at two aspects. The, first of all, the information about the instrument's database. Is, is, the, is such information public? Is it easily available? And second aspect, we were seeing if we can, if the business can re receive such an instrument through new portal ecosystem or through DIA application or through another platform which submits to the local government and uh, in the sphere of uh, environmental protection or agencies in the sphere of environmental protection, we identified that 67 state regulation instruments should be digitalized with high or medium priority within the next three years. We're offering to digitalize the activity related to the CO2 emissions to the waste management and with the greenhouse gases. So the, the, this is in full compliance with what Mr. Evgen Fedorenko mentioned in his address and we support it in full. I want to emphasize that the register of the environmental impact uh, evaluation should be optimized. This register should be technically modernized in order to ensure the in integration with other, integra other information systems in the country. And to summarize, I want to mention that during our study, we communicated with civil society, we communicated with the business associations, with businesses, and we submitted re applications and we received responses from uh, the Ministry of Environment, which helped us to identify the financial and uh, indicators in the, and the quantity indicators for uh, state regulation instruments. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I would ask you to stay on the scene and I would like to in, invite Mr. Yevgen and Mr. Oleksii back to the scene. Uh, if we have any questions in the studio, if not, I will ask 
the first question myself based on the presentation, based on your address, we understand w what will be the use for business. Can we continue this chain? What does it mean for an average Ukrainian who never faced uh, the necessity to obtain any permit or never, never would face such a need? What does it promise for an average Ukrainian? I want to say that for an average Ukrainian, it will have a number of, it will contain a number of simple things. Is the saving of time, saving of money. When we talk about the business, we're not talking only about the big enterprises. We're talking about the businesses, including small and medium size. And in, in the sphere of environmental protection, the number of application is rather big. But on the other hand, we have to also take into account the fact that the sphere we're talking about today is the environment. Why environment? Because it's important for every Ukrainian. And there may be some exclusions that we have to talk about the communities. Communities are their average Ukrainians as to, in terms of uh, environmental protection. One of the most demonstrative example is the environmental impact evaluation, is the opportunity for, for an average Ukrainian to influence the resolutions uh, regarding the building of any infrastructure facility, any manufacturing facility, etc. A person living in this, this or that community, they can propose or they can express their concern with the, you know, either some uh, standards will be complied with uh, in terms of waste management or emissions, uh, the person should not submit a number of applications or requests through bureaucratic procedures in order to understand which agency is competitive. You know, w w when there are questions from the community, there is a question, uh, the response is, it's not our competence. And uh, the such person, they just don't know where to go next. And in that in this case, with a, a person with the help of their smartphone, they will not have to hire some consulting company or legal company. They will be able to do it just in a couple of clicks with the help of their own smartphones. And so the, this is the participation of every single Ukrainian, the uh, participation of the community in environmental protection and in this reform which, relate, which is related to digitalization and deregulation. Alexei Ghana, do you have anything to add? Dear colleagues, Mr. Yevgen mentioned almost everything. On top of this, I want to draw your attention to the fact that today there is already some facilitations that changed in terms of different licenses and permits. And since the 21st of February, the government adopted a resolution on transferring a number of these permits on a declarative principle. If a person wants to go to this or that field and to receive a license there, just in a couple of clicks, in a couple of minutes, in a couple of seconds, they can receive it through DIA application, just three seconds. And the declarative principle means just information. Within three seconds, a person informs and they get the access to relevant markets. So this is where we're moving to already. My last question to you, maybe there are people who after watching this briefing, it really doesn't look like the most urgent problem in the life of Ukrainians when uh, there are questions of life and death and just survival. What would you respond to this? people, why do you think these uh, changes are timely? I want to say that the activity of our program is focused on the support of the small and medium-sized businesses. And this activity in optimization of state regulation instruments, it will help to tune the legislative field 
in the most comfortable way, in a way most comfortable for a small and medium sized business. We do it all so that our business after our victory is feels easier to establish themselves the procedure for obtaining the state regulation instruments or and cancellation rescinding of some burdening licensing procedures it will facilitate the activities of the businesses to raise investments and to r rules in the market m make them easier this is something that may help help us achieve the victory. So if you have anything to add, Mr. Yevgen, Mr. Alexey, I will say just a couple of words. Really, we all know that the plan, the, the, the plan for reconstruction was already presented by the president in Lugano. The enemy wants to intimidate us and to break us. They think that Ukraine would not think strategically uh, with account of all those horrors that you mentioned. I mean, the power, life and death, but Ukrainians keep fighting and they demonstrate resilience and thinking strategically. We have to understand already now and we have to act now and to understand that the first steps after our victory, because we will have to act very quickly after the victory questions in the studio i have just one small question you said that there are 127 instruments in this field in the environmental field part of them requires to be rescinded rescinded digitalized or optimized could you please tell us how long will it take to sort out those instruments and what are the costs of it what what are the costs required to be spent for it. I want to say that we mentioned 127 permits and licenses. Uh, we mentioned that some of them should be optimized or digitalized or cancelled. The Ministry of Environment thinks that we were, I said that we set the plans, the ambitious plans for three years. On one hand, we understand that we don't have a lot of time for that. On the other hand, we understand then the, the, the country in the process of reconstruction will need the clear and understand, understandable bur bureaucratic in a good sense of this word, not bur bureaucratically corrupted that we had association with, the, but I mean the bureaucratic field for the businesses, for the investors to be able to plan a few years ahead so that they can plan construction of a facility, of an installation, and they clearly understand the procedures they should undergo and how long every procedure will take. So this is why us, as, as the Ministry of Environment, we set the ambitious plans to bring everything in compliance with the opinion drawn up by USAID for digitalization of the permits and licenses within three years. Regarding the digitalization, Mr. Again just mentioned, I want to emphasize the optimization of the legislative field. It's not so costly because digitalization requires costs. The reconstruction of, a, of ecosystem, the creation of new public services. But as to optimization, I want to say that it depends more on the parliament and cabinet of ministers which will uh, affect this type of changes. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I have to confirm th that uh, the parliament is uh, whom everything depends on. It doesn't take a lot of expenses. They work and they get have their salaries, they receive their salaries specifically in the sphere of deregulation. We cannot uh, calculate their uh, exact figure now, but I can tell you the figure that we can save. There are more than 80 registers for the time being. They are spread about a number of regulators with a number of instruments. Those 80 registers are 
something that the government spends 111 million on and after we create this uh, united register we see that by the indicators this uh, spending will amount to 7 million this is our calculation well let's wrap up with this Alexei Kucher, Yevgen Fedorenko and Hanna Bashnyak told us about the changes in the sphere of digital deregulation related or digital deregulation in the sphere of environmental protection thank you for this conversation follow our announcements and stand with Ukraine